In today's text, in John chapter 6, in every single one of those verses, 51 through 58, we have a reference to eating Christ's body or drinking his blood or both over and over and over, every single one. And it's such a blunt reminder of Holy Communion that I couldn't help but say, we need to have this sermon on Holy Communion today. 51 through 58, every single verse, we have reference to eating of this flesh or drinking this blood. What is this all about? So I decided to look a little more into what it means to be holy. But the more I looked, the more confused I started to get. So maybe you could help me out a little bit. As I looked, I realized we have holy cow, but why not holy goat or holy chicken? What's that all about? And I'm not going to say the word, but we even have holy poop. Why don't we have holy pee? Or, or holy flatulence or holy belching or something? What? I don't understand. And why is it the only rhyming holy is moly? Why not holy poly or holy slowly? And why is there only one holy fish? Why is it holy mackerel? What's wrong with the salmon? Or why isn't it holy tilapia? I don't get it. And then even Dina has a, a holy thing. And, and this has got to not be from South Carolina, which is where she's from and her parents are from too. This must be from her time in Minnesota at St. Olaf. It's, it's the only, besides the, the chalice, the cup, it's the only other holy container I'm aware of. We could be going on doing something and suddenly she says, holy buckets. <laughs> what is that about? I don't know too much about any of that stuff. But I might be able to say a little more about holy communion. When we bring holy and communion together, we capitalize the H and the C. It is a special full meal that means just one thing. But let's look at each of the words first on their own. What does holy really mean outside of holy cow? If we look back in the Greek, the original language of the New Testament, and also in the Hebrew, the original language of the Old Testament, we find pretty much the same meaning. It's almost synonymous of what it means to be holy. Someone in the early service guessed, did anybody else have a sense of what it means just to be holy, literally? Sacred. 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 Well, very much so, yes, because it also has to do with God. Yes, there's a specific thing, too. It's a, think about distance. It's literally to mean in the, presence. in the presence of God. Actually, it means literally to be set apart. And if you think more in a Hebrew way, where you had a fear of God, too, and you were even worried about, you know, if you get too close, it's something that is set apart or consecrated for God. But if we think in that Hebrew sense, too, the one who is most set apart is God on high in, in heaven, who is most holy, who is most sacred, too, right? So when we think of holy, we think of something to do with God or something set apart or consecrated for God. What about communion? If you think of communion in general, what does that mean to you? Any thoughts? Together, yes, it is definitely always together. And it's more of an in-depth sense of just being together. Usually there's a spiritual component to an intimacy, a spiritual intimacy of being more deeply together. We even have what we call our full communion partners. It's a similar sense of the word. Some of our Episcopal friends, United Methodist and Presbyterian USA, uh, others as well that we even sometimes, well, we share the meal too. We share the, the holy table together. Sometimes there's even pastors shared together with that intimate spiritually and that sense of community. Just down the road in Roswell is Pastor David Rogers, who is a Presbyterian USA pastor serving Cross of Life Lutheran Church as their associate pastor. So there's that intimate sense of spiritual gathering together. But what is it that makes then holy communion together, where we capitalize then the H and the C for this meal? And there's so many things, and I hope to preach a number of times on holy communion again, but just for today, we'll think about several things. The first is the past. We do this in remembrance of, and we hear those words of Christ too, this is my body, this is my blood, and we hear, do this for the remembrance of me. And we will have some people come to Holy Communion and they will come with heads down and hands up and somber 
and very, very mindful of the sacrifice Jesus has made. And if, if you want to go somber, that's fine. I don't mind that a bit. I come happy to communion. <laughs> but if you want to go somber, that's fine. And there's a reason for that, too, because we think back to what Jesus has done for us through the cross. A number of Catholic congregations, people were used to having a little more somber communion. And symbolically, in the Catholic Church, you often have the crucifix on the cross. And that is a reminder of that price that Christ has paid for us. It's a very important reminder for us. And so it's good for us to remember the sacrifice and the brokenness and the death that Christ has had. But as Lutherans as well and um, other Protestants too in general, we very rarely have a crucifix. We usually have an empty cross as a reminder of the presence of Easter. That Easter has happened and because of that, Christ is also the risen Christ is with us here today. So at the same time that we remember what they often call the Last Supper, which some scholars do say, well, since it was instituted then for the first time, maybe it should be called the First Supper <laughs> instead of the Last Supper, but no churches have heard use that um, terminology. In addition to the Last Supper, when we think of Easter and the present and Christ with us here now, we also think of the Lord's Supper or the meal or Holy Communion. And there's one other word that I love, too, that's m much more of an Easter kind of word, too, and it's a Greek word called Eucharist that describes Holy Communion. Any, anybody know what Eucharist means, literally? It's Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving. And when we think about what God has done through Christ on Easter, it makes sense that we should give thanks and be glad that Jesus is really present with us now. But perhaps even more amazing with all this, in the, or another thing in God's grace, it's not just what Christ has done for us in the past. It's not just the present, Christ being here now, but there's another aspect of the same meal for the future, too. It's like the number four, but it's spelled a little differently, F-O-R-E, compound word, the second part of it. It's a four. Yes, of the? Yes, a foretaste of the feast to come. So even when we come and, and we, we have, through the mysteries we heard about in the children's sermon, this real presence of Christ with us now, we also celebrate that one future time where all the saints will be gathered together. We celebrate past, present, and future in connection of communion when we celebrate this holy meal of holy communion. And another great thing about it, too, is it's not dependent on us because sometimes we might come to the table full of penitent hearts and just ready you know for, for God to, to share God's son with us we may maybe just just so ready for that meal other times yeah you know come back to holy communion again here's the bread okay I'll lift my hands out sometimes it just seems kind of matter of fact if we do this all the time it's true for anything in life but it's just as much Holy Communion, whether we are super ready for it or whether we just feel matter of fact, because it's not dependent on us or up to us. And the us includes me too as the pastor. I could have been outside this door just before communion. I could have kicked a sweet little kitten and scowled at a sweet little old lady on the way in. I could have tripped and fallen and had all kinds of profanity and said something other than just poop. I could have spilled the wine. I could have done, you know, I could have dropped the bread. But with the words still spoken, the words of Christ, the bread still broken, and the wine still poured, it would be just as much a full Holy Communion. Because Holy Communion is not about what we do, preparing ourselves for God. It is about what God has done through Christ Jesus as God's gift to us. Now, it'll be probably more beneficial for us if we're more ready for it and don't kick a cat just before you come in. <laughs> but the meal itself is just as holy, just as pure, because that mystery is the work of God for us and for our salvation. And that gift of grace, that benefit we have in this sacrament, is like we would think of in any meal. It is strengthening us and nourishing us. But unlike any earthly meal, and as we hear time and again in today's gospel from Christ, too, it is something that connects past, present, and future with us. It is something that is forever. So it is an amazing meal that we share, and this is why it is central in our church. I also share a little secret for, for me, too, personally. Um, 
almost each time when we have the meal, and it's different times, different days, but at some point along the time for me coming around the table, I'll get to a point when my eyes are about to start watering up. And it's almost every time, and it's because I'm looking back and seeing, and I'm seeing brothers in Christ, and I'm seeing sisters in Christ, and just the, the sense of communion and the sacredness of that and the holiness, the godliness of that is just overwhelming sometimes. The experience of it, knowing that Christ is there in our midst and that we are connected in communion through Him. Sometimes I think of the people that I've loved who have died and gone before me and sometimes someone just reminds me of that. And, and when I'm reminded of the people that I love, I also look at the person as I'm giving communion to them, and I wonder about a spouse or someone else that they may have lost as well. And I think about the past, the present, and the future, and how one day all those people that I hold as beloved and all the ones that they hold as beloved, we will all be together in one holy communion. And it is the most amazing thing, a mystery which we will never figure out on this side of heaven but it is the promise and it is the reality. It is the gift of grace that we have been given to celebrate this day and every Sunday. When we come to this table, it's still bread and it's still wine. It doesn't change in some great transformation way. The bread was prepared, the wine was bought in the store, it's still the same stuff. And yet, at the very same time, through mystery that's so far beyond what we could possibly understand, it really is also the body and blood, the very real presence of our Lord and Savior with us. And no matter how we come to the table, may we always come to the table because it is always God's same full, complete gift to us, no matter what state of mind or heart we are in. So may we always come to the table to receive this meal, which is Christ with us. Christ who has been with us, who was there on Good Friday in all the brokenness and pain, who has been there with us all along in all our brokenness and all of our pain. Christ who is with us right here and right now, who is with us on Easter and is with us in all of our celebrations and joys in all of our Easter's, and Christ who will be with us in that communion to come, the foretaste of the feast to come. May we come to receive Christ right here and right now, and Christ with us forever. Amen.